Oof, it was a hard fight. I should save. Where's the save button? You know who I am, don't play stupid. Last time we talked about Asians making European looking game about the war between France and England, so it's only logical to now review a game made by Europeans trying to imitate Asian games. And not only that, but a game made by English developer, published by French publisher. Life is truly the greatest comedian. And boy oh boy did they succeed it, because the only reason I know it's made by European studio is I looked it up on the wiki. I would have never guessed. Good job boys, have a baguette on the house. Silver. Silver is a game about a man becoming so angry he won't be able to smash those polygonal 3D chicks this evening. He goes on a murder rampage killing pretty much all of the bad guys in the region and making sure their funerals are closed casket ones. Before we proceed, let's go through our usual routine of pretending we tried to buy the game and looking for that community guide from a Slav who maintains the full HD mode. And I hate to break it to you boys and girls, but we are once again not selling to the house of insane Ramses. You can buy the game legally. Who knows, maybe next time we will steal something. And once again, with my deepest regrets, I must inform you that Slavs have abandoned us. And there is no full HD mode for the game. There is a stretch option, but it looks ugly. So we can only hope for someone as glorious as fun as Sage to bless the game one day. But until then, me and Slavs are at war. Release the full HD mode or the cat gets the bullet. You have one hour to comply. Cool, now let's get to gameplay. Ok boys and girls, a quick quiz. You try to copy JRPG from the 90s. Think about it. What's the most obvious thing everyone knows them for? What would you focus on to repeat their success? You probably got most of it right. Pretty visuals, grand story with high stakes, nice music and all that. So the only thing left is to add combat into the game and we can- Whoops! Sorry, I dropped the whole bottle labeled insanely stupid control scheme into the mix. Let's hope it works out well. So what we got here is truly something amazing. Normal games have normal mechanics. You click on the bad guy and you hit him. Or if you're feeling fancy, you open a bunch of menus and find the button that says hit him harder and press it. Or if you are currently suffering from microplastics poisoning, you just press 6 and Joel gets fucking deck with the golf club because we don't use the word fun around here, you loser. Now how do you fight in Silver? You hold control, your cursor becomes a sword, telling you that you are now in a stabby killy mode, and you hold left mouse button and swipe it across the screen. You move it up to launch, you move it down to hit behind you, and you swipe left and right for broad strikes. This is so fucking stupid, I love it. It's such a funny concept. Whoever came up with that idea was 100% high, no doubt about it. I just imagine how that group meeting went. Oh yes, yes, sir, we are doing the western take on those so-called Jai RPGs, so we could copy the control scheme and just guy barges in high as fuck. Slaps the shit out of the game director and goes. I got an idea, I got it covered, just trust me, I will do it and it will be as cool as the time we made people school shoot their TVs. And leaves. And it's exactly how that happened. I got in touch with developers and they confirmed it went exactly like that. Down to the slap and everything. The game managed to strike that perfect balance between not being too long and having a funny mechanic to enjoy in the meantime. Just trust me, you have to give it a shot, just to feel how it plays. No other game went this batshit crazy with its control scheme. And I love it. If anyone from the team is watching, I love you guys. You were ahead of your time by like 50 years. Whoever you are, I hope you're doing well. And whoever wrote that GameSpot review is a fucking loser. Please come back, we need your insanity now more than ever. There's also companions and archery and magic and nice little radial menus with fancy little icons, but you won't be using them a lot, because who needs them when you can make your enemies explode? By the way, there is a fast travel mechanic here and I would say it works identical to how they do it in Bethesda games. You explore an open world, find points of interest and you can fast travel to them using the map. And it all worked in the year 1999. A year so old there is a great chance most of you watching weren't even born yet. And what I'm trying to say is that Todd Howard is a liar who stole fast travel from a game from Dreamcast and you should never trust his lies. Story of the game is just as insane as the fighting mechanics. You wake up one day and go to your usual sparing with your grandfather, but it's cut short by some big evil guy saying he takes your wife because evil wizard governing the realm said he needs all the women for his experiments. That begins your grand quest that I will call Wife Gone Sad of going through all of the world searching far and wide for Power Ranger spheres with the sole purpose of getting your wife back home ASAP. So David, being a typical man whose wife is gone for an extended period of time, won't get gastritis by eating roasted rats he found laying around. It's not a hero story, it's a story of one man doing everything in his power so he don't have to cook for himself. Something all of my audience can relate to. 
I will be spoiling the story of this fantasy how I saved your mother sitcom now. So if you want to avoid spoilers, go to here. But let's be honest, it's an RPG from the 90s, you know how the story goes. Since it's very clear to the citizens of this fantasy land they can just vote for the good guy, they skip the part where they argue over which color of the tyrant they want, blue or red, and go straight to the solution to the problems that are not so different from our real world struggles, realizing that bad people have names and homes and are, in fact, mortal. And they are, in fact, very lucky because David is here, and David is not just some blondie twink from the forest, he is the most dangerous man in this region, and by taking his life, all of the bad guys in the world just seal their fate, even those who are seemingly unrelated, like pirates who leave torrent without seeding. They have just unleashed hell on themselves, because David is coming and he's not stopping, he will rip and tear until it's done. Over the course of the story, you will kill a dragon, rapidly decompose another dragon, gather 8 orbs of power that were believed to be lost forever, until white sentient light told David that in order to continue scoring, he has to find them all, disassemble a giant mech, find the lost city of ancient civilization rumored to be long devoid of any life. Make sure those rumors were true. I think by now you should start noticing a pattern of how David solves problems. Travel across the world and kill every single bad guy. Besides Silver's daughter, we all love sexy god bitches, so she gets to leave. Go to the land of the dead to ask who betrayed you. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Holy shit, that's convenient. Kill the goddess of death while you're at it. I like how in this world it's very clear that higher beings and gods exist, and David just goes around fucking them up one by one. He's the strongest soldier, fighting his weakest gods. Find the loser with school double swords who took your wife. Now take a guess what happens to him. You are absolutely right, David promotes him to the graveyard tenant. Defeat the most powerful wizard in the world. Do the Last of Us 2 ending where after you killed like 500 people, hero goes, no, the cycle of violence is bad actually. What? You have to kill him. Without his power, he's already dead. Wait, holy shit, who's this guy? David, step aside. It's over. <laughs> he killed him. Black Transformer just killed him. Choke on that, Neil Drunkman. Finally, reconnect with your lost wife. Get an angry Skype call from the God of Destruction himself, telling you someone will pay for the death of Silver. Silence! Someone must pay for Silver's death! Wait, there is no other way out but to kill a god? Well, yeah, I guess David is a safe bet for this mission, considering his body count. Fuse with the Transformer guy. Kill the God of Destruction himself, no big deal, just a quickie and save wives of everyone else in the process, besides William. William was charged for the crimes of collaboration with the enemy during the times of war and executed. His wife is now property of the social communist party of Jarrah. I'm kidding, she's a free woman, please don't cancel me. And see your grandfather die like a loser in the first hour or so. Not really important for the overall story, he just had that for the plot reasons I decided to die moment, so the story has stakes besides Levi Flegan or something. David got over his death in like two minutes anyway. And since it's never specified in the story that you stop for sleep or rest, we can safely assume that all of this happened in one day. So David just barged in, cashed out accidental death and dismemberment insurance for all of the bad guys, refused to elaborate and left with his wife. He could have killed them all at any time, but I guess he never bothered. David is a force to be reckoned with, sure, but unless his head game provider is threatened, he wouldn't lift a finger. My point is that David is clearly a giga chat. While there is no picture of his dad in the game, we all know he looked something like that. Game has a great story with a stupidly funny ending, where you think we are going with that cycle of violence and he will have to live with his mistakes trope for losers who get hard when they hear words grey morality. But out of the blue, the game takes 180 turn and says, no, we are going all the way in and we won't pull out. Amazing, truly amazing, developers made a slam dunk of a story, shout out to them. Ok, but what about the visuals? What about them? Just look at this juicy, pixelated, tight ass. Honestly, I would, without hesitation. But yeah, it looks cool, ok? It's a Final Fantasy 3D graphics with better faces. If you like how old Final Fantasy 3D looks, you will like it. And if you don't like old 3D graphics, how the hell did you manage to get that far into the video? It's a good, stylish and coherent stuff with gorgeous hand-painted backgrounds, all accompanied by amazing soundtrack. And you know what? We are doing it. Sit and listen to the music for a second, my ADHD friend.
Good shit. 10 out of 10. Composer should get all the awards. I looked him up actually and his name is Dean Evans. He's still around and still making music on his YouTube channel. Please go to his channel that I will link in the pinned comment and show him some love. He's clearly a talented person and I respect him. But it is a shame that game never received the recognition it deserves. Because with the little budget he had, Dean created something great, bordering on the verge of cult classic. I really hope he goes back to composing for video games. Because I know that we lost something great when he seemingly left the industry. If by some miracle you are watching, I hope you're doing well, Dean. And we all truly miss you. And the water is... I don't know, man. Two wet blankets out of five microplastics and hands containers. Could have been more realistic, to be honest. Big set on that one. As for the cons, there's only one. Fuck that place and fuck that bell. Also, if you feel lost, use a guide, there's no shame. I grew too soft because of Oblivion map markers, so I was lost like four times during my playthrough. Not sure if it's a con or just me being stupid. Probably just me being stupid. But what about Steam Deck? <sighs> Jesus Christ. No, the old game from 1999 with mouse specific control scheme does not work. Does it? No way it does. Ok, let's try it. Yep. It's working. In order to run it, you should pick community scheme named Silver, shout out to the guy who made it, and force the game to run in Proton Experimental, because native Linux version has rendering issues. Battery time is long enough for your hands to start hurting. But the game difficulty is high sometimes, so good luck finishing that one on Steam Deck. But I believe in you. And do I recommend playing the game? My guy, do you think if I hate the game I would make a video about it? Yeah, maybe you're right, maybe I would. But as for the silver, it's a cool game with great music and stupidly funny fighting mechanics. For six dollars, it's well worth it if you ask me. I give this game a list of people David should visit next, out of bad things should happen to bad people. If you're still here watching after all of my insane ramblings, consider subscribing. Because if you liked that, I can assure you there will be even more stupid shit to come. That's all for the video, bye. Ok, since there's no patterns to ask me questions, I will just talk about stuff I want that didn't fit into the video. First magical orb is found by going to the tower where some old guy lives, where he welcomes you by shooting you with a fireball, immediately followed by him trusting you and giving you the orb of power, and even telling you to use items from his chest. I think this old man is suffering from dementia. Jug, the big warrior who joins you, does so in a hilarious way. You talk to him. He calls you short, and David, as any other short person, gets very angry and threatens to fuck him up in return. Say little just one more time and I'll... Puff and puff till you blow old Jug down. Which ends with a bar fight culminating in Jug saying he enjoyed it and bonding with David. The moment Silver is mentioned by David, Jug offers his help to join the fight. No questions asked, no additional info needed. He just met a short guy who wants to kill the strongest wizard who ever lived and entrusted him with his life. I am amazed by him, he is my spirit animal. A giant guy going on a long and dangerous adventure because he had nothing better to do. I strive to be like him one day. The bell puzzle is so hated for its very strange timings on how fast you need to hit the bell, there is a fix in Steam community targeting only this puzzle. Just think about it, no one bothered posting full HD mode, but bell puzzle, yeah, let's fix that. And I also bought a new microphone, so if you are someone who likes to give feedback, please tell me if my audio improved since my last two videos. I need outside input of someone who isn't my friend. And yeah, I think that's it, enjoy the teaser for the next video. Right lord, that lord, same thing really.